Hey, Benji Kaiser here. I'm a graphic designer and I love doing layouts and using typography in order to create more compelling designs within my work. And today I'm going to tell you about five basic tips you can implement to get more compelling layouts within your designs. Thanks for tuning in today for this episode, and if you haven't subscribed here yet, I highly recommend doing so. I put out videos six days a week about graphic design, creativity, and motivation in order to help you dominate your field. So throughout this video, if you're finding this content useful, hit that subscribe button and get that bell notification to make sure you don't miss out on any of the videos. Also, the like button is super helpful to this channel, and if you have any questions, comment below. We're gonna head over to my screen right now and check out the five basic tips on how to create more compelling design layouts with typography. Welcome over to my screen and today we're talking about typography that will help you create more dynamic and interesting layouts simply by the use of typography. This is often extremely overlooked when graphic designers are just starting out, how basic tweaks can really set apart your typography using the exact same font. The problem is graphic designers get in trouble when they're beginners when they're using too many fonts. A lot of times you can use one font family with multiple varieties to get extremely dynamic looking layouts. So today, let's talk about typography, the basic guides to follow in order to have interesting typography that catches people's attention. All right, now as you look at this, it just really kind of looks like you could have laid that out in a Word document. There's nothing that stands out. You have to really read the sentence to get the full gist of what we're about to talk about. But let's bump down to our next page, and we're going to look at a little bit more dynamic way to set this apart. So immediately you know that we're talking about typography. Today let's talk about typography, basic guide for interesting typography. Not only have I taken the time to change the weight, change the spacing, but I've also eliminated some words that were unneeded. As you see in the first one, there's a lot of extra fluff that we really don't need. The key to design when communicating with typography is simplicity. Can you break it down to communicate as much as possible with as little as possible? My favorite quote by Antoine de saint Exupéry is, I know I have achieved perfection, not when there is nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. And that's really how I try and go about my graphic design on the day to day. All right, moving along, what did I do? I simply changed the weight, the size, the line spacing, and the letting in order to increase and create a more compelling and interesting layout. All right, now let's look at another basic rule, and that is understanding the spacing between lines, known as letting. Here we have standard spacing, which looks honestly kind of like a book layout. If you tighten it up a little bit, that creates a little bit more tension. And if you loosen it, you're more relaxed when reading the piece. Now this really comes into effect when you're dealing with full paragraphs of text. If you have a really tight text, it's gonna kinda wear out the reader and they're not gonna wanna read it. But if you open it up a little bit, they feel more relaxed and it gives them more time to consume the content. Now this really starts to show the difference. It really creates this blocky text feel, if that's what you're going for in your designs, when you do it in all caps. Now the way that you change the letting and do all caps is you're gonna come up here to your type panel and you change the letting here. So if I wanna tighten it up even more, I put that to an eighth or a 12. And then you can just bump it up and down as you're with your keypads here. Now if I wanna take these sentences and turn them into what's called title case, which is how a sentence is normally laid out, I would come down here to change case and I would do title case and that would capitalize each letter. So sometimes you have like titles and books and stuff that are like titled like this. Now, if I want to turn it into a sentence, I would just highlight all the text, come up here, and I can change it to sentence case, which is where just the first letter of each sentence is capitalized. So that's a really helpful tool to quickly change over your type from uppercase, lowercase, title case, sentence case, etc. All right, now let's move on to kerning. Now, kerning is the space between each individual letter. This becomes very important because I just typed this font out exactly how it came out of the type tool. And what you'll see is there's these odd spacings here between each letter. Now what I can do is I can come up here and adjust the kerning between each letter. Now an even faster way to do this is to click between the letter, hit Alt or Option depending if you're on a Mac or PC, and use your toggles on your keyboard to move this back and forth and you can change them. 
that we don't have to head up to the toolbar every single time. And here's it spaced out accurately after I took a moment to work on the kerning. So that's kerning, that's the space between each letter. Now we'll head on over and look at tracking. Now tracking is the space between all of the letters. So here's the font when I type it straight from the type tool. Comes out with a very smooth tracking, very readable, simple, something that you would see in a sentence form. Now here's one that I've boosted out the tracking and made it wider. Now how I do this is I highlight the text, go up here to the tracking box, and I can decrease and increase the tracking. And then the same thing here, I simply brought the tracking down. This creates a far more tense feeling when you look at the typography. Next we'll look at another secret to using one font family to get very different looking fonts throughout the document. And that is finding a font with multiple variations within the font family. So here, I'm using Acume Pro. And within Acume Pro, we have many options to work with. But not only do we have Acume Pro, but we also have Acume Pro Condensed, which is what you see down here. And within Acume Pro Condensed, I have multiple variations. I can do thin, I can do ultra black, I can do regular. And this just gives me far more variety without throwing off the composition with so many different fonts. And I find this very important and very helpful. And one of my favorite things to do is don't just say it, just go and stack it. So, so many times in order to create more compelling design layouts, you can do simple things like stacking your header text to make it a little bit more compelling. And then having an image you put up right next to this. And it gives it a really nice feel, a really good intro, a big punch at the top of your document. Whenever you're in doubt, don't just say it, stack it. That's, that's a lot of times it works really well. And don't abuse this, obviously, in, in all circumstances, you're going to find different ways to stack your fonts, to pull in the tracking, to pull out the tracking. Um, and this is just a basic dive into how to use typography to get more compelling layouts. Thanks again for tuning in today to this episode. If this has helped you at all, please hit the like button. And if this has really helped you and you don't want to miss out on anything else, subscribe and hit that bell notification and you won't miss out on any of the content I'm putting out here six days per week. Again, I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com and we'll see you here on the next episode.